Hello, my name is uh, Ricardo Escobar on Twitter. I mean, Jorge Escobar on Twitter and Jorge Escobar on YouTube. Uh, I go as Ricardo Escobar on Twitch. I am streaming this live on Twitch uh, as I'm recording for YouTube. Today is um, Tuesday, uh, August 16, 2022. It's 6.39 a.m. Central Standard Time, Mexico Time. Um, so, well, uh, I am on a spaceship uh, on VR chat at the, at the time. And I may like to talk about my plans on... Am I recording this thing? Oh, yeah, I'm recording. So... I may like to talk about my plans on uh, for learning, uh, my learning plan, <laughs> my, my learning roadmap from today up until the end of the year. Uh, I'm planning to either become an expert on my current job and solve problems on my current job so I can have more time, more free time for myself and basically uh, remove myself from this job. So. Um, my plan is to use several tools at my uh, at my disposal. The main one is going to be Python. Python has uh, a couple of libraries that allow me to automate uh, web browsing and whatnot. But mainly, uh, there are uh, there are like five projects on the company I'm working on that are built on Python, and I believe that. Uh, if I get my shit together and I am and I am able to maintain to maintain those projects with Python, uh, I'm going to be uh, invaluable for the company and maybe they are going to either uh, promote me or at least give me more money. If not, maybe I can just uh, get a better job because that's really how I've been improving my paycheck. Uh, year after year, I just moved to an to another job that pays better, uh, and that's pretty much it, really. Uh, but anyway, if I'm not going to get paid better, uh, I'm very grateful, for, by the way, for the money I get because I was able to buy this VR headset, of course, and explore the the marvels of the metaverse. Uh, but in reality, I always want to 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 get more, you know. And, uh, well, that's basically it. Um, I ha I do have ambitions. My first ambition is going to get my own home uh, somewhere isolated, probably, with a very big house. Um, and live surrounded by uh, all my needs fulfilled and probably some luxuries, like a, a super amazing uh, gaming room, uh, an excellent studio or office, a really big office. Uh, and have a lot of space for myself. Basically, build a castle for myself. Uh, that's my ambition, anyway. And uh, obviously, all of that requires a lot of money that I'm not really generating at this time. I'm basically living with my parents, uh, so I'm my my objective is to uh, say thank you, dad, and thank you, mom. But uh, I really need to get my shit together and get and generate a lot of money. And I want to live on my own anyway, uh, because uh, here I only uh, I I am allowed to live in this house, but uh, I'm basically uh, recluse to a bedroom and to a to another space that I use as a, as an office, and that's basically it. Uh, uh, I don't really. Uh, I'm basically living uh, in a room <laughs> and, and, and go to work to the to, re, to the next room and, and that's my entire day, you know. Uh, thankfully enough, VR uh, is making me feel free in the sense that I feel like a like I I not uh, I not uh, in like a, in a. I, well, I don't feel like uh, I'm limited by space anymore, you know? I don't feel the need to go outside because I, I can look at this thing. I am in a spaceship right now. Uh, there is like a planet behind me, actually. And it looks very uh, looks very real to me. Uh, it, it looks good enough that uh, my brain doesn't really, uh, uh, doesn't really understand that it's not really real, I guess. Well, it's a game. It looks like a game, but uh, a part of my brain is like, uh, oh, you know what? Maybe we are uh, going. Uh, uh, this is like going outside, or even better, because you don't really need to go outside. But anyway, 
So, uh, what's the plan? I do have a lot of courses. Let me show you. This is the plan. Uh, where? Wait. There we go. There we go. Now, let's take a look at this website. This is Udemy. Uh, this is one of my most popular websites that I use for learning purposes. And this is uh, these are the courses that I've been taking on. Uh, the main one, the last one that I completed uh, truthfully is this one here. It's called Complete Python Developer in 2022, Zero to Mastery. It's a really good course that I may like to review uh, maybe next weekend. I should review it next weekend. Uh, and is the basis for my main plan for this year. Uh, I need to become a master in Python. Oh, wait, what was that? What? There is a meeting right now? Nah, it's not, it's not my war time. I'm sorry. 6.45 a.m. I'm sorry, but that's not for me. Anyway. Uh, well, the plan is to uh, learn what I need to learn to make my job easier. And, re and, and my objective this year is to remove myself uh, from the system. What I mean by that is that uh, as I'm working currently, I need to be uh, in front of the computer to do my job. Why? Uh, there are a lot of moving parts on the systems I work with. And some of those parts tend to break a lot and tend to fail. Uh, I guess because, uh, I don't know why, but I guess uh, because of the same reasons, obviously. When you build a, a system and this system grows, uh, and then you need to deliver something or fulfill a deadline or whatever, uh, most most of the time people or developers, uh, we take, um, we cut corners, uh, we don't do stuff as we are supposed to do just to be faster. And in return, we are not even not going faster. We are, uh, we are doing things the, the wrong way, creating technical depth. So what is technical depth? Uh, just like financial depth are things that uh, are basically things that you do that you are not going to pay in the present time, but are going you are going to pay in the future time uh, with a bigger price. So it's the price of doing things the wrong way. So what does that mean? Well, uh, maybe I don't know how to do something in 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 some software on some piece of software or some programming language. Uh, this happens a lot in SQL. Let's say that I don't know how to create a view. Uh, and basically a view is a select statement, uh, is an storage uh, a SQL select statement, basically. Uh, you can save it and you can browse it like a table, but it's not really a table, it's a query. So this is store queries, uh, let's, let's assume I don't know how to do, how to work with them. And I might like to present information for a report in certain ways. So it's going to be easier for me to create a new table for the sole purpose to create a report. So what do I mean? Let's say that I create a new table. I move the required data inside that table, basically uh, creating a copy of the data. And then I, every time I want to create a, a report, I read from several tables and I store the data inside the, uh, the new table and I print out the table in a, into a report. I see that a lot, actually. So what that tells me is that the person that was doing that doesn't know or, or doesn't know that views exist uh, because you don't really need to create a new table and copy paste the data uh, and making that table redundant because you are copy pasting data that already exists. And what happens if the data inside the the table the report table uh, doesn't change but the source data is changing then you need somehow uh, clean the reporting table 
and then gather the data again and, and copy paste the data inside the reporting table all over again. Uh, and that makes sense to you maybe at the beginning, but it's clear to me that every single time you are uh, you are dropping the data from the reporting table and filling the data inside again, uh, you are going to be using a lot of CPU power that can be used in something else. So build, we already had views for that same need. So why not just use them? Uh, well, it's simple because the person uh, developing the software, it doesn't know how to use them. Uh, the same happens with the store procedures. Uh, the same happens with, um, with a lot of features that programming languages have, uh, but people don't know that they exist or don't know how to use them properly. So what do they do? They work around them with the tools they know how to use. It's, it's, the, um, it's, the, it's the hammer fallacy. I know how to use a hammer, so everything looks like a nail to me, you know? Uh, but that's not true. Not everything is a nail. That's why it's a fallacy for me. But anyway, so as you can see here, uh, this website, it's, I do it looks like my Steam, like my Steam library, similar to my Steam library. I have a lot of courses that I haven't even started yet. I just bought them when, uh, and there is a, I think there is like a, uh, like an offer going on right now. There are discounts right now if you want to buy courses, uh, but I don't need to buy more courses. I need to start and finish watching the courses I bought. Uh, so uh, I completed this one. I don't remember when. I think it th I finished this one like two or three months ago. I don't remember. Uh, maybe like three months ago. I don't remember. Uh, and now, from this course over here, this is uh, the complete Python developer. Uh, I may like to move into Pandas, the Ultimate Pandas Bootcamp Advanced Python. So this course over here uh, is, is for learning how to use Pandas. Pandas is a Python library that allows me to to work with data sets, work, work with databases, work with data sets, and basically do the ETL transform transformations using Python code. Really useful. And uh, I, I bought this before I got into this job. And funny enough, uh, two of the projects I'm working with are developed with pandas. So in the end, it's going to serve me very well. It's, uh, I was, it was, uh, I think that I was training myself for this job before I even knew I was going to get into this job. But anyway, uh, that's one of the courses I want to take, but uh, it's not an immediate uh, need for me right now. So what I mean is that uh, it's good to have, but it's not my immediate need. Uh, I need to do, I need to learn something else first. Um, I need to learn, uh, for example, SQL integration services. Uh, what is SQL integration services? It's a, it's a Microsoft application that belongs to the suite for SQL Server and allows me to create ETL workflows. What that means is that uh, it allows me to create uh, programs, basically, to move data around uh, and to do the ETL uh, jobs around, basically. Uh, ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load Data. So what it means is that, you know what? You have like a, a, like a hundred different databases from different servers and different operating systems and different uh, database engines. And you can use SQL Server Integration Services to collect the data from those databases, transform the data into a single and centralized uh, storage, and then load the data in a massive pool inside another database. Uh, this is done for moving data from different databases into our um, uh, data warehouse. That's what it's called. So we are moving a lot of data from different sources into our own uh, data warehouse. And what, what a data warehouse is? Well, basically, 
a data warehouse is similar to is a database or a or a group of databases, um, a collection of databases uh, that all that actually centralize a lot of other databases for the purpose for reporting, creating reports, and creating dashboards, and analyzing data, and creating uh, statistics, basically. So it's for, uh, let's say that I have a, like a thousand Costco, uh, Costco shops or Costco supermarkets, and every single one of them has its own database for uh, saving sales and saving uh, information and data. And well, now I have like a hundred different databases uh, with the same structure or very similar. So I may like to gather the data from all those uh, Costco stores and copy them, copy the data into a centralized database uh, in order to create my my global reports and know how much money did I make this year, for example, or which of the stores is the one that um, that brings in the most money and who are the guys that um, are doing the best job, you know. There is a lot of information that you can gather by just centralizing data into a single store place, but anyway. Uh, so in order to do that, I need to learn integration services. I am halfway to this course, uh, but the author, Philip Burton, just sent an email to all the students uh, saying that, uh, well, this course uh, is going to be replaced by a new one, like in a month or so. So I'm going to finish this one, and I'm going to finish another one called Microsoft SQL Server Reporting Services. Reporting Services is a different piece of software, similar name, but it's really a, a different piece of software. This uh, this tool allows me to create reports. I don't really know too much about it, but it's basically, if you want to like, uh, and what is a report? Well, uh, let's imagine like a self-report uh, or maybe even a ticket from the Costco store may be considered a report, you know. You are buying stuff, and when you are paying the uh, when you are paying your bill, uh, well, the the printed bill is a report actually, you know. Uh, so all those paper printed reports or screen printed reports or or even dashboards can be created using uh, SQL Server reporting services. So what's uh, special about a, a report? Well, uh, for you it may be just a PDF with your credit card statement. Uh, but that report is going to connect to a database or other databases or data sources, and then fill out information from those databases into the paper. So that's basically what uh, reporting services do. Uh, I don't know if you can create uh, dynamic real-time dashboards with reporting services. I ignore that part. I, I, I don't think so, but uh, it will be, um, that's one question I have. Uh, there is another tool that I need to learn for my current job, and it's called, let me see, uh, let me see, where is it? Uh, Power BI, that's from another Microsoft, Microsoft tool, there we go, it's this one here, Microsoft Power BI, the practical guide 2022, you know, uh, the name of the course and the current year is like a trend on Udemy, anyway, so, what is Power BI? Well, Power BI is very similar to reporting services, but instead of focusing on printed reports or PDF reports or HTML reports, where you are showing uh, static data once the, the, the report is generated, the data doesn't change because, oh, well, I already printed my bill. I don't see the numbers changing in the paper, you know. Uh, Power BI is a dynamic dashboard creator tool. What that means is that uh, Power BI, the main difference, you can create uh, similar reports uh, as the ones you print out, but with the difference that these are dynamic. So if the underlying data sets, if the data changes, you can see your graphic or your report change in real time. And that's like a superpower for, in, uh, in my eyes, you know. Because you can see, for example, years ago when I created in 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 Objective Pascal in, using Delphi, uh, I created a tool 
to visualize uh, an election um, an election competition a political election you know uh, i believe there was somebody uh, running for mayor here in my hometown and i created a tool to capture uh, the election data and generate uh, Uh, a report, basically a dashboard, actually, where every five minutes uh, the graphic was uh, updating the values of the of the of the electoral race in real time. You know, uh, initially I was uh, updating that in real time, but but as data was increasing every single time, so the calculations took longer. And as time passes, it went from going up, uh, updating every second, you know, uh, up until updating every five minutes, because uh, the amount of data was just too big. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's a, a, a tale for another time, I guess. Uh, but Power BI fulfills that need. And there is a mobile version that allows you to watch and see those uh, dashboards in your phone. And more interesting, oh, wait. 7 a.m. I still have an hour before I start working. Anyway, and uh, and Power BI allows you to see those dashboards in in a tablet, for example. You can uh, download the iOS app and watch your dashboards in a tablet, like an iPad, or you can download the Android app and 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 do the same for uh, in Android, basically. But not many people uses iPads anymore or tablets for all that matter because uh, most people just use their phone and uh, maybe uh, some nerd is going to use a tablet but not even I have a tablet and I am a nerd. Uh, I may like to have one but I think it's going to be like a clumsy phone uh, and uh, Android tablets are not really that good. Uh, the apps, um, uh, I don't see any apps optimized for tablets in Android. Uh, and the iPad is just too expensive. It's too expensive for my liking, and I don't think it's worth it. And every two years, the iPad ecosystem just uh, crashes down. So it's, it's basically, if you, you're going to spend a lot of money on, an, on a device that is going to last at, uh, as much as two years, and then you need to replace it because uh, the updates are going to stop coming. Uh, I guess you can say the same for Android, but uh, at least my phone endured like seven years before that happened to it. So anyway, uh, Power BI, that's another thing I, I need to learn for my current job. So up until here, I have one, two, and three different tools. Four, if you can, Python, I don't really count it because uh, I've been learning that beforehand. So I, I, I guess I have like a head start on that one. But anyway, so uh, you can see here, I have a lot more uh, Python related content yet to watch including a React course that's really big, uh, a complete Oracle SQL bootcamp that I'm no longer going to watch right now because uh, uh, I was working as an Oracle database developer, but not anymore. So I don't see the point uh, of watching it right now. Maybe later when I get another Oracle job, maybe in the future. Uh, I was, I was wa I'm watching this bash course that I already completed. Uh, but for some reason, uh, the video reset. I think I reset them. I don't remember. So I'm going to uh, review it because I've been using Linux Bash a lot. And it's really fucking useful. It is so useful, in fact, that I use it for complex things like uh, compressing this, uh, uh, these videos, for example. I use FF FFmpeg for compressing video. Uh, and the rate of compression is really good. Uh, and I use a bash script that basically looks for any videos that need compressing and it just compresses them by itself. Uh, so it's amazing. It's, I, I really love bash scripting. Uh, what else? Well, that's, that's the main plan so far. Uh, I have at least one, two, three, four, including pandas, four courses that I want to watch, okay, uh, in the short term. Those are the ones that I, I'm going to need for my current job. Uh, now, 
uh, I I don't think I can show you my my actual job my my company computer because I I don't want to risk uh, showing anything that I should not supposed to be showing. Uh, but anyway, there are a couple uh, there are some courses that uh, the company I'm working for is asking me to 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 watch and fulfill. One uh, there the um, uh, one of the courses is a uh, it's from Pluralsight, and it's called a uh, technolo technology coefficient. Um, and these technology technology coefficient courses uh, are getting released every every two months, every three months, something like that. Uh, every couple of months, they are releasing a new uh, te TQ. They are called uh, te uh, technology coefficient courses, and TQ for short. Sure. So uh, there is a new TQ course that I haven't uh, watched because it's new. So the company is asking me to to complete that one. Uh, that's from Pluralsight, and it's a it's around a two hour investment from my part. So it's not too mo uh, it's not too long, but I haven't done it yet. And the other ones that I am actually about to run out of time because I need to finish them by uh, the 18 day. So I and we are today is. Uh, 16 i have uh today tomorrow and the day after tomorrow to finish these courses and the courses are for security advocate which are basically uh courses that teach me how to avoid being uh, uh email fish uh, you know uh so i don't fall for for email phishing basically those are the main courses uh, basically a uh, security advocate means you don't get um uh, you didn't give away valuable information or get hacked because you are receiving emails, you know. Uh, so avoid phishing, uh, phishing, anti-phishing courses, and um, and 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 what now, you know. So they call it security advocate, but but uh, the courses are are not complex. It they took time and they are like little games. Uh, that you play and they teach you about the importance of security and you do like a little exam in the end and that's basically the course you know uh, those take like half an hour each course and I need to complete like five of them so I need to invest like three or four hours of my time for to do those uh, so my plan is I'm going to since those have like a, a, dead, a, a deadline uh, today and up until 18 of this month, I'm going to be doing the security advocate courses. Then I'm going to complete the TQ course. And then I can move in into these Udemy courses that I pay with my own money. Uh, I'm going to complete the SSIS or SQL Server Integration Services course because that's halfway. Then I'm moving on into... Uh, SQ, Microsoft SQL Server reporting services. Uh, I just started that one, but I don't really uh, watch too much of that. Then I'm moving on into Microsoft Power BI. And the last one is going to be the Ultimate Pandas Bootcamp. And I should be able to complete that by the end of this year if I'm lazy, if I'm doing the minimal, you know, like an hour a day. Um, but that's not the plan. So I wonder uh how fast can i go if i make an actual plan so what is my plan i work from let me see if i can show you that maybe not my actual schedule but let me see google let me see if i can show you my calendar here Uh, maybe a week. There we go. There we go. So this calendar is empty because this is my personal calendar. Uh, but the idea is this. I'm going to use this block over here up until 5 p.m. I think it is. From 8 a.m. up until... 5 p.m. I think this, uh, this is 4 p.m. 5 p.m. So this green block is work. Okay. So this block 
is work from Monday to Friday. So this is uh, allocated uh, allocated time for work. So I'm not doing anything else other than work. Probably I'm going to use uh, uh, that time inside this block to create my Docusaurus project. And the Docusaurus project, I'm going to talk about this in a different video, but anyway. So this blog is, point, is going to be for work. Uh, I'm probably planning to wake up early to have an hour, maybe two hours before I start working to make these videos and streams. Um, after work, I'm not going to have too much energy at all. So I'm going to probably uh, go back to streaming or uh, straight out a study, you know? Uh, I could study here uh, and I'm going to invest at least a couple of hours for that. Because to be honest, uh, at this time, I'm going to be just too tired to, to do something else. So let's say that, you know what, here I'm going to dedicate at least an hour for a study uh, or at least two hours, maybe, you know, uh, let me see if I can like. Uh... Anyway, I think like this, maybe. There we go. So a couple of hours to a study. And I could repeat this daily. You know, uh, I'm going to invest a couple of hours at the end of my day to a study purposes. And after that, I could just play video games or get some sleep. Of course, I'm not going to do anything else on my day. And I could repeat this schedule for the entire week. So at least I'm going to I'm going to invest a couple of hours at the end of my day for study purposes. And I should be able to clear out uh, like for example here another two hours. Another two hours, and finally, up until this day, uh, another two hours. You know? Another two hours of study. Uh, so I'm going to be studying two hours at the end of the day and complete my security advocate by this date, by by uh, Tuesday 18, I, I think. Uh, and uh, after that's done, I should be able to move on to my plan of learning SSIS, SSRS, Power BI, and Pandas. Uh, and again, I'm going to be using um, two hour blocks during the weekdays, you know, but uh, on the weekends, I'm going to be using more time. Probably I was thinking about uh, using the same block of time that I use for work like this, from 8 a.m. to uh, 4 or 5, or 5 p.m. And repeat that for the Sunday. So maybe I'm asking too much for myself, maybe I'm not gonna do it. Uh, but I, uh, I have a say that uh, use your weekend to build the life you want, not to skip the life you have. Uh, so I want to use this time to power through my courses and to basically train me. So the main point of my weekends is going to be to study uh, and push through these courses because there is a lot of content to watch. And uh, and learning on Udemy is not just watching course. This is not YouTube. Uh, I'm going to be uh, opening a course like, for example, this one here. Let's open uh, this one over here. So how much time do I need to complete this course? That's the question. Okay, let's see if we can, uh, I, I wonder if I can actually load this web page because I guess it's going to detect that I'm streaming this thing and probably it's not going to load up. Are you loading up my friend? I don't think I'm going to be able to stream the, the video itself. But I want to see, uh, oh, I'm not seeing the content, what's going on? Uh, okay, that didn't work. 
Okay, let's open another one. Looks like uh, we're getting issues with you, I mean, that ain't good. Yeah, well, I don't know what's going on. Does it matter? Maybe the courses themselves are getting updated. That that could be it. Let me pick another one. Pandas, for example. I haven't started this one formally. Yeah, the progress is almost nothing. Uh, I don't see the page loading up. Something is going on. Well, the point I was trying to make is that let's try to open it again and, and keep it loading, maybe. So the point I was trying to make is that uh, if a course is going to take me three hours, I multiply that time for three uh, every single time because it's not just watching three hours of videos. It's watching the video, uh, installing the software required to do the exercises or the examples. Okay, it's loading up right now. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. There we go. Uh, okay, course content. That's okay but I'm looking for the overview maybe. There we go. This course is going to take me a total of 32 hours. Uh, well, that's 32 hours of video, okay? So we are talking about 32 hours multiplied by three is six, is 96 hours. So I'm going to invest 96 hours of my time, more or less, uh, in order to complete this course, okay? 96 hours, that's basically uh, a full video game, you know? Uh, it's basically like an introduction to an MMO around 100 hours, you know? Uh, that's what it's going to take me to complete this uh, course successfully. Why? Because I'm not just going to watch the videos. I need to do the exercises, install software, uh, figure out problems, because every single course uh, is updated by default, you know, and maybe a new version of some software is coming out, and maybe a video is outdated already because uh, the software changed, and I need to figure out the stuff. So the cost of figuring out is going to add time to my learning. So I need to be purposeful. I need to invest two hours every single day at the end of my day. And I need to invest my entire weekend to get the fuck out of my of my current situation. Uh, I'm not in debt. I live with my parents, but uh, I ne I'm nowhere near buying a home, you know? Uh, I'm planning to move into America uh, to to get my visa and work in the United States and probably live there. And if I am allowed to, I may like to nationalize myself there or be a citizen there and, and live in a rural area where we have uh, like an amazing internet connection. And uh, I'm basically build like a, like a big ass house where I can live in my, myself and uh, die alone. Why not? Uh, I, I like the idea of die alone. I don't know why. I think it's cool. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, many people think say to me that it's really sad that you want to die alone. Uh, but I don't think that being alone or lonely is bad. Uh, most of my progress, and especially my professional progress, has come from being lonely, you know, because uh, when I fuck off, uh, and I just isolate myself, uh, I learn a lot really fast because I don't have other people distracting me from my purpose. I, I can basically just focus on flying solo uh, for a long ass time and I don't feel tired or distracted by other people. So my wife described me as an eagle because uh, I fly alone and I fly very high and uh, not many other birds are around me because I'm flying so high that nobody else there. And she actually uh, uh, gave me a present on my on, on my birthday, and it's like this, um, like it's like a hawk uh, feather, a feather from a hawk uh, inserted into a wooden base, and it has uh, like this very cool, um, how do you call it? Uh, it's a picture or a, a painting of the eagle, uh, the face of, of an eagle 
painted upon the feather. It looks really cool. I still have it. And it's one of my most precious possessions. Um, they, the, the hawk feather, because it's not an eagle feather. It's a hawk feather, but it's close enough, you know. And she gave it to me on my birthday, and she described me as an eagle. Uh, that's what I love. Uh, I love about my my wife. Uh, may her soul rest in peace, because she passed away. Uh, but uh, she admired me a lot, uh, and I uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, I didn't fulfill uh, many things that I was planning to 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 do. But anyway, uh, regrets, you know. Uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, I tend to fly longer when I am alone because when I am uh, with people, uh, I I tend to gravitate to the group in the sense that uh, sometimes people tell me that I'm going too fast or that I need to slow down, and 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 I tend to agree, I I guess. So I slow down. And I lower my, uh, let's say that I, I just fly fly down. Uh, I I go lower to the uh, to the minimum common denominator, so to speak. You know, uh, because I I because uh, I don't know. Sometimes when I'm talking about stuff, uh, I feel like people don't really connect with me, uh, and I I am uh, talking to the camera right now, so. I guess not many people are going to connect with me anyway because I'm talking on a stream and recording a video for YouTube that nobody is going to watch, I think. <laughs> uh, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, uh, I, I'm digressing now. I am about to start my work day. I should probably get my coffee. Uh, I already brewing coffee, so I should get my, uh, my, my body caffeinated. Uh, there is no food left on the fridge. I need to buy groceries that's another thing i spend too much time inside the house uh there is nothing to eat we don't even have eggs uh no eggs so i don't know what are we going to take for breakfast but anyway uh but anyway i'm going to uh shoot down the street right now that's the plan that's the plan uh later today i'm going to describe my plan with uh docusaurus i talk i talk a little bit about docusaurus yesterday but I may like to show it to you in more detail because um, it's going to help me uh, creating this document, technical documentation website for myself. Uh, but anyway, thank you for listening. If you ended up, uh, see you in the next one.